Hi, everybody. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for coming out today. I'm Jarrett Weisselman. I work for BuzzFeed. And I'm very, very excited to be here to talk with two of the stars of one of my favorite shows. Ladies and gentlemen, the stars of Mom, Anna Faris and Allison Janney. Thank you both so much for being here, and I apologize in advance. There's a dog in the front row, and I'm so, it's gonna be very I distracting. There should be a dog in every front row, I, and on every lap. He's adorable, she's adorable. Hi, sweetie pie. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Congratulations on the show. I mean, it's been such an amazing success. You know, and I think what was so cool about the episode we just saw is it really illustrates, I think, one of the most amazing things about the show, in how seamlessly it meshes like mirth and comedy and I mean I can't remember any comedy that has killed so many people and is still remains such a funny show I'm serious I credit myself <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have snot coming out of my nose I feel like uh, no thank you though um, do I actually really have snot coming out of my no you're fine All right. are you guys sure someone someone here might tell me Allison would you you're tell good me? you're good you're good. Are you sure you're not going to sabotage me? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, I, I, honestly, it's, um, it's a testament to our brilliant writers and to Alice and Jenny and to Chuck Lorre. Thank you. Well, I'm curious because, you know, what's so interesting is neither one of your careers have sort of been typical in the typical Hollywood way, and I feel like this show is such a great what, fit. What, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm not making $20 million? Is that the implication here? No, but I just mean you've both made such interesting, <laughs> consistently interesting choices throughout your career. Yes, choices. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, Scary Movie 4 was a bold and brave choice. <laughs> I wanted to do it for the craft. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean... Listen, I'm gra grateful. grateful. But I'm, I'm, Anna, when you read the script for this sh the show the first time, did you sense its sort of inherent juxtaposition of these two things and how it sort of could juggle those two worlds? I really wanted to play a dimensional character, and that was of the utmost importance. And when I read the, the pilot for Mom, um, I, I was so, I was just blown away by how complicated this person was, Christy, way more complicated than I am. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, and the, the idea that someone like Chuck Lorre wanted you know, me to be a part of it. I was beyond, you know, honored and thrilled and um, and Alice and Jenny came on and I just couldn't love her more. I annoy the shit out of her. <laughs> I, I love you very yeah. much. We really have a, a lovely relationship that we get to have off camera and on. We love working with each other. We have similar work ethics. We both, which is important to me, I don't know, as an actor, you, we. Both are impeccable for our sense of time, t showing up on time, actually, being <laughs> prompt. <laughs> and and uh, and also just running a set that's really um, loving and kind and, and supportive of everyone who comes to, to play with us. And uh, I think we're both, um, uh, we don't have creative control on what happens on Mom, but we're thrilled in the direction that it started going and, and moving in and dealing with real um, uh, things that happen in, in with people in recovery, we don't shy away from anything, whether it's an overdose or, uh, you know, a friend battling cancer or, you know, daughter, my granddaughter being pregnant. We're just dealing with everything that life throws at you and, and, um, and treating it with, with respect, but with, um, with humor too, letting the moments that need to be, to be real and, and uh, emotional lie there and not feel the need to make that funny, but then, Two lines later, we're in a, you know, we, it's just a lovely magical balance. And I think we both, um, I think that, you know, acting is, um, uh, I don't prefer comedy or drama. I just prefer messy things that are a combination of everything because life is funny and tragic all at the same time. Um, in a I'm nutshell. Well, I'm curious, you know, because the other great thing about the show is, you know, we're in a time right now where so many people are talking about the need for, 
diverse stories and women's stories to be told. And this is a show that not only has sort of two female lead, you know, two female stars, but the entire support system that's built into the show is also women. So you're telling, you know, their three best friends who also go to group with them. I mean, this is a show about five women's lives in a lot of ways. And how exciting is it to be telling these complex human stories through the prism of these five women? It feels unbelievably rare. And I think that we're, you know, we have, uh, you know, weekly moments, I think, in the in hair and makeup when, you know, you, you have five women sitting around and there isn't a man necessarily. And there is the there is this moment of like, oh my God, how lucky. I mean, that, listen. Uh, I she love loves men. <laughs> she is not saying anything I do against love men, my men. let me tell you. But, but, but the idea that someone has sort of entrusted the idea of uh, network um, comedy with a, a solid female cast. And um, that, that, is, that feels just incredibly special. And, and, uh, and you know, I, like I grew up doing comedies w where there was sort of the conventional wisdom of sort of pitting uh, one girl against another. And um, this is not that at all. It's the antithesis of that. And so that, I, f I just feel incredibly fortunate. So. <laughs> I mean, right, it, it's uh, <laughs> the um, the the wide range of um, characters is all um, you know when you do you deal with a show that deals with people in recovery and in those rooms there's no um, uh, how am I trying to say it's a great leveler <laughs> you know uh, people in recovery because all different walks of life you have Mimi Kennedy's character who's uh, kind of the guru and the the mama bear of of the group and and Jamie Presley who's this you know crazy you know r very incredibly not economically challenged um, woman who's just got the worst of uh, ethics and uh, it just she's a shit show train wreck whatever you want to call it um, and um, and uh, and then uh, why am I um, and Beth playing uh, Weeping Wendy who's a state there's just some great women from all different types and and um, um, we're having a lot of fun together as it's, it's become this wonderful ensemble and and which I love about acting because I, I think it's a team sport I've always said it was a team sport and it's really um, it's a lot of fun to act with these this group of women especially this one <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that was your insight voice, darling. That was your insight voice. <laughs> just, just think that, sorry, but you sorry, say, I love you. Sorry, sorry, you to read, you so you... Anna, <laughs> <laughs> uh, earlier you talked about the fourth film in the Scary Movie franchise, which you so lovingly <laughs> referred to. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was really the only time when you've played a character over such a long period of time, and even that pales in comparison to how long you've played, you know, Christy now on Mom. I mean, how have you enjoyed the experience of playing someone's journey over such a prolonged period of time? That's a really nice question. I, I it has been the first time that I played a character for this long, and I, uh, I love elements. I love, I think. 90% of it. I love that the writers are sort of getting to know me. Like the idea that my character was a stripper and is, you know, was a former stripper. But they, <laughs> the writers have slowly <laughs> realized that I'm an incredibly awkward person <laughs> and a terrible dancer. So they've sort of incorporated the, these, a little bit of like a through line of like, oh, she was a really bad stripper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love, so I love like there, there is this growth period that I've never experienced before and also the surprise of not knowing where we're going, which is on one hand frustrating and on the other hand incredibly uh, uh, th sort of thrilling. Um, but uh, I love, I do love playing a very dimensional person, which um, you know, I haven't, I haven't always <laughs> played. <laughs> <laughs> and then she can give me a little pat on the back. Thanks, thanks, Allison, Johnny. <laughs> oh, that feels good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Allison, you are no stranger to playing characters for many, many seasons. Uh, small character you may be familiar with, C.J. Craig on the West Wing. <laughs> 
what is it as an actor that you enjoy about the experience of working in episodic television where you have the ability to go on a journey with a character like that? It's, uh, there were a lot of things in that because b on both shows, on Mom and on West Wing, I never was in charge of what was coming down the pike. So I never, you know, had the luxury of looking at my character over Hugh Jarkin and going, oh, she's going to end up there. Um, I need to prepare. Like, you just don't know what's coming. So, um, but I certainly um, love the journey of, like, who I thought Bonnie was on the, in the pilot episode is, is quite different than, than where I am now with her. Well, Are you gonna start I think the writers really, ex they, were, they got to know you. They realized that you were a slutty, uh, nasty little vixen. Sorry. It's okay. I love it. I love it. It comes out of love. It's a love. It's a love. And, and you know what's really great is a steady paycheck. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just say it. It's great to work. It's so, I am so grateful to have a steady job. And who gets, as an actor, as actress, we don't get steady jobs. Like this feels like the closest I'll ever be to a steady, like a job job. And it's fantastic. I, I recommend it highly. I feel, I know, <laughs> I feel, it's almost my favorite thing about, about a long run. It just is, is a luxury now that I wish everyone could, um, it's fantastic. You, you're doing it now. You've yeah, had but a, I thought that I was your most favorite thing. Oh, honey, now listen. <laughs> You know I love you enormously, and things Out for I a say, while, and then no. we can make up. Allison, you and I had uh, spoken for a story I did where the headline was how Allison Janney became that actor in everything, and I'm curious if you feel that way. Do you feel like you know the, you've worked and worked and worked and taken no time off, or do you just feel like we think that? I, I feel um, that I've been very fortunate to. I, you know, I don't know what to attribute it to other than my theater days in New York where I would go from, you know, my my Broadway debut was a Arthur Miller play and then I did a, no, an old coward play and then I did an Arthur Miller play and I, I've always, I felt trained, like that was just what I did. So, so a lot of the jobs I got in the beginning of my career were from people who knew me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like an agent, it was like, oh yeah, Allison, we, she did that, let's let her do this. And they were like these little parts I would get in and then snake my way into all of a sudden being the actor who was in everything. When I really, it just, get, I got, it was, it was, it was a great, I'm really lucky that I got to, to do that and not be top typecast as one. I, I love, it's not luck. It's no, but it, there is no, a bit of luck. You all, everyone knows it's a yeah, bit of luck no, and, and, and hard work. And, I, I, um, love, I love you, the, maybe, yes, but I will, I, Allison, and I say this with like so much sincerity and love in my heart, you are just fucking brilliant and I love you so much. I love you, Anna. I love you, honey. No. Did you guys know each other prior to mom? No, we didn't. I, I, I know we met, we met and fell in love in our first reading. Um, so I auditioned for this part, the part of mom. I auditioned for I, the part of mom. I did too. No, no. No, you didn't. You were. Yeah, I did. You did? Yes. You did. You knew that. that. <laughs> <laughs> you we'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm curious though, because you know, I think we have all either seen actors or you know, worked with other actors who you do not vibe with. And it's very clear in this instance that you do a little bit with each other. I mean, for you, what were those early days like in terms of building this relationship? Because you, know, you have 22 minutes a week to tell a story about these two women who have known each other you know, for Chrissy's entire life. So I mean, what was important to you guys as actors in the beginning about sort of discovering your history with one another? That's a really good question. Because the mechanics of it are more difficult to sort of articulate than the actual process a little bit. I, I think it was really just about um, two women uh, really trusting each other and ex like sort of like going through this journey and depending on each other and don't yeah, we, but we don't uh, let me talk. Right, just wait a minute. 
<laughs> that, uh, what I love about Anna is that sometimes, you know, when you start a project and you're supposed to be instant best for our mother-daughter relationship, go. I and mean, you haven't had any rehearsal time, really. You're just sort of thrown into it. And we, um, I, I think we trusted that we didn't need to sit in a room and go, okay, when I was two, you did this to me. And then, not, you know, build our uh, whole backstory together. We totally sort of, wanted to do that. You I said no. didn't want to. Um, <laughs> I don't like that kind of act. I just like to make up my own story. She likes story. to West Wing it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we grew, like, there's sometimes we talk, like, the Burgundy Bistro is hysterical. Mimi Kennedy, who's so fantastic, but she likes to, and this is gonna, this is, she likes to talk about the far side of a fart. Have you heard that expression? <laughs> Has anyone heard that expression in here? You know, like when you start a scene and, and then you go, okay, but before this, I think we were at the meeting and, and then I didn't feel like driving, but you drove, you know, to figure out the whole story leading up to the moment right before the scene starts. So Mimi loves to talk about that stuff. And I do too. So she does too. And sometimes I'm, I'm like, like, oh my God. Is my napkin in my lap right now <laughs> at this point? Or do, am I, is the menu open? We and did it, it but we didn't else. start like <laughs> we didn't start like that. We were totally we just do we dove in and yeah, trusted yeah. that you bring what you you bring your own experiences to so your I've part and then more annoying. Oh my god. I You're really so have <laughs> I really have I love you. I totally have I'm we, sorry everyone. Oh I'm my sorry, god, Allison you Jenny. are embarrassing me so <laughs> much right now. <laughs> no, but 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 yes, but th there is a different process and but I think that you and I just had a I like to think an instant camaraderie. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. We just, we knew instant, we worked together really well and we worked in a similar way and then other people don't and it's it's a whole journey and it's it's, it's fun and I, I love everyone's process, is different and um, I, I think we respect and love everyone else's, but even when it's not ours, it's like, oh my gosh, okay, well maybe I can benefit from talking about what I had for lunch before the scene started. You know, maybe it's, a, it's kind of a <laughs> It's fun, I love it. I love, I love what I do. That's my um, thing. Well, let me ask, I mean, in the subject of loving what you do, I would love to know sort of, I mean, Alison, I'll start with you. When do you feel like you knew you wanted to be an actor? I knew there was um, nothing else I seemed to be very good at. I'm not, not being humble or modest. I'm not being, I, there's nothing else I could, literally, I tried. I went and did, I'm famous, I was told, if anyone's read anything, I, I talk about this all the time. The, I took the um, Johnson O'Connor aptitude tests in New York City when I, w I just couldn't get a job. At all. I mean, my career didn't start till I was, you know, older, you know, way older than you are now, Missy. <laughs> I was 18? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yes, that's what. Um, so uh, there was a long time because I didn't feel comfortable calling myself an actor until I won a SAG award. That was the first time. That's when I, I actually said, and I, I said, I actually feel like right now I can say I'm an actor. And I, it was because I felt, in, I felt nervous and embarrassed because I, I wasn't. I think, I feel like part of, Allison's talent is her uh, humility and empathy towards sort of, you know, th the human condition idea. And you are brilliant at so many things. I've seen you. I've seen you dance up a storm. I've seen you sing your heart out and be brilliant at it. I've seen, I know that you used to ice skate on, like, on, like on a professional level. You are... Now she's just making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so I love you. No, I love thank you, you honey. Too. I love you too. But we, but you like I you I, I don't know. You you're you're an amazing. You you have a whole a whole thing. Whatever you want to do, it's yours. I how can I mean? <laughs> I, I, I know pretty good, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, no, but it's true. It's true. Sorry, I totally usurped your like your beautiful story. I don't even. I don't remember what I was. <sighs> Absolute yeah. tests. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but y you know. And then I kept getting pulled in, and uh, that's the end. I just sort of. <laughs> no, I didn't feel comfortable calling myself an actor for a long time because because I was acting, but I wasn't making a living at it. And my parents were very very worried about about <laughs> where I was going to end up. Very concerned about me. And my mother was an actress. She. And she stopped. Um, I don't know why she did. She had. 
She was roommates with Eileen Brennan in New York City and um, Rue McClanahan. Um, she she had a so I think I kind of got inspired by her and uh, went down that train. You did plays too. You started in Seattle in a play. You did plays, wasn't that? Was Heidi. That? Heidi. <laughs> Are you serious? That was the first. No. Can you yodel? No. Fuck no. I Come can't. on. <laughs> No, there's a dog in the audience. I'm not going to swear anymore, Allison. <laughs> we totally put him to sleep, by the way. God, I wish I didn't see it. It's really cute, you guys. Um, but Anna, I do want to ask the same question of you, because you didn't come from a, have any acting in your family, really, and it was sort of a bit of a new concept. I mean, what made you fall in love with acting? Uh, well, so I, I, um, I was incredible. I, I know this sounds not fully related, but... My family is fairly tall, and I was incredibly short. So short that my parents were going to send me to, like I was consistently like at least a foot shorter than anybody else in my class. My parents were gonna send me to like a growth clinic, and like, and so I became like this person who, my God, it's gonna come to a huge surprise to all of you that I needed to be heard. Um, <laughs> and so my parents enrolled, started, you know, they enrolled me in some acting classes and I just fell in love. I was, um, I wasn't particularly popular. I, I loved like losing myself in books and imagination and, um, and, uh, so I, I ended up doing some local acting classes and then, um, started auditioning for theater in Seattle and I was lucky that Seattle was a pretty, uh, it has a healthy theater uh, community, and then um, thought I would give Los Angeles a chance. I resigned myself to the idea that I would be miserable for a year working as a you know, waitress, and, uh, and at the end of the year, I would do plan B, which was to be in advertising. Um, I don't know. You are making stuff up now, right? That's <laughs> right. Advertising. Um, I'm totally like this poor person who has to use this microphone next. It has my spit all over it. <laughs> uh, but no, I was able to uh, to get scary scary movie and uh, and feel incredibly fortunate for that. But um, my parents, I was lucky to have incredibly pragmatic parents, um, but they were they were also incredibly supportive. So. Uh, so I sort of had, I, I think that, w that was a really good mix for me. But I would definitely tell anyone out there who wanted to act um, to, to just, it truly comes down to like, I, I feel like practice and, and theater and getting that reward out of the audition process is so different from from the actual process of making a, f a film. And I, I, there's no number that you call and say like, oh, yep, yeah, here you go. I gave you the secret code number and uh, you get to become a <laughs> star. It's a lot of humility and a lot of practice and uh, a lot of, um, I guess just like, just like any, just like any other job but um, but finding the love of the actual um, process and, and craft. And, um, and that's why Allison, tonight, um, okay. I'd like to ask you something. Oh my God, you, you, would you be Heidi and Heidi? Um, the, the Edmonds Community Theater, Edmonds, Washington, which is where I grew up, we're putting on a production of Heidi. Is, does Heidi have a mother? <laughs> no, she just has, she's, there's an evil woman. The evil woman I can play. I can no, play no, that. no, you're Heidi. You I already got know. the gig. I don't think, think I, I think I'm too old for Heidi, honey. No, you're not. You live you. That's right, Jambone. <laughs> she's right. <laughs> She's a little minx. She's a little kid. Every every day, every Friday before we do the show, we have a um, speed through of the lines, and Anna comes in and does this whole routine, and she's done it for every single for three seasons now. It's called "I Just Talked to Chuck," and she mostly gets. It used to be just for us, but then then when the guest stars would start coming in, they started believing that she was 
she had actually just talked to Chuck, and, <laughs> and she says things like, um, I just talked to Chuck, and um, uh, for this um, episode tonight, I don't know why he uh, wants us to do this, but this is just, just for this episode. So in every, every line, just look into the camera and deliver your lines instead of... <laughs> And then, but she does it so deadpan, and everyone, all the guest stars are like, are, is she serious? Are you serious? And like, God, this is weird. And then like, we'll keep them going until the last minute, and, and she'll say, like, I just talked to Chuck. He wants you to, um, for, just to sing the first, every first line of every scene, and then just go back to talking, but just sing. And, and she's, I, I don't know how she does it, because I get, I, have, I get, there's so many things in this girl's life, and her, you know, at home, and work, and everything, and, and then she manages to come up with a brilliant thing to start up the show every time. Horrible thing. It's, it's really fun, though. Court, there's a real ritual, and, and, and she's like a camp counselor, like, one, she gives the camaraderie of everyone, and like, come on, let's all get this, to, do this together, and let's have hands in before the show, and it's all, she, she's just, it's a lovely way to be, and it's really fun, it's fun to be with you every single day. I would do this forever. I love you. I love you too. Love you too. Thanks, Alice. But you know, I think the reason maybe all the guest stars believe the What's My Chuck game is because, I mean, honestly, Anna, the one thing that I've always been impressed by you as an actor is like the commitment to the comedy. I oh, mean, yeah. whether it's oh, yeah. true, like whether it's yeah. like Scary Movie yeah. or House yeah. Bunny or even what I think is one of your best performances in Just Friends, if you haven't watched it. It's yeah, hilarious. she's brilliant in that. Just I mean, Friends. Have, have you always sort of been drawn to comedy or is it are you one of those funny people who's like I honestly don't know why people think I'm funny oh t yes definitely the latter I I um I had never thought about yeah like nobody in my life growing up would ever have thought I would have gone to comedy would have been cast in anything comedic when I told my college roommate that I've been cast in scary movie she was like oh my god Anna you're not funny I was like, I know, I know, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to get fired. And, uh, it, and it was true, like I, I, like I think that, I think that part of what my at least approach to comedy is, is sort of um, earnest, being, having a level of, of, of being, sin a level of sincerity and that's the only way I know how to approach it, but because I'm certainly not a stand-up, I'm not good at it. I, I don't, I don't know. It's, but I will say that I will do anything for a job, <laughs> <laughs> and including steady, yeah, uh, anything, anything. Anybody out here? Oh, her I have to tell my favorite Chuck one. I just talked to Chuck. This is the last episode of the season. We still hadn't heard if we'd gotten picked up or not, and we were all terrified. And she comes in and goes, okay, um, I just talked to Chuck. And uh, some really great news and some not so great news, but it's okay. And we're like, what? The good news is we have been picked up for three more seasons, and everyone, even the regulars, were thinking that she was telling that, and they were like, oh my God, I'm so excited. She said, hold on, no, no, the bad news is, I'm the only one that's coming back. <laughs> but you all are very talented. You'll find another job. Don't, you'll be fine. It was my favorite one she's ever, because of ever, I mean, everyone I mean, else I'm, believed you. I've done you. it every Friday. I know, Friday. it was, but you're, you so, got, you're so, you're so, completely uh, deadpan and per it was just brilliant. Uh, I'm was, very proud of myself. It was, I, was I am the only one coming you. back. <laughs> 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 but you all are so talented. You'll so find talented. You, guys are you work the all the time. Oh my god. It's about these awesome mom <laughs> t-shirts. <laughs> You're gonna work oh forever. God. <laughs> Luckily, the show is coming back. Yes, cast I can't intact, wait. She's got so 20 to, you know, 22 more yes. of those you gotta come yeah. up with. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious. I mean, obviously, it's scripted television. It's 22, so it's got to be, you know, tight in the way that it has to fit in all the story. I think you guys get through in an episode and in a season. Does that leave any area for sort of like improv or really making your own, or is it kind of just in the the smaller moments that you guys do that? Well, I would say it's in the, the, the we bring it to life physically. There's not a lot of leeway with as there wasn't on the West Wing either. None of these writers, they like you. To, they like you to say what they wrote. <laughs> but that's where, Al like, Allison is such a. F she is so unbelievably physically gifted. Like she, she does these things like where she'll, 
slide down the railing of the stairs or like you know or you're like you'll leap over the sofa or you you'll do something insane that is not scripted that is just such joy to watch and well we we got to do a lot anytime we get to do anything physical it's pretty yeah well i have short I, legs okay I, 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 I we did a huge fight scene in a bridal shop that was absolutely it was just it was a lot of fun not to I physical stuff is my I thank my parents for making me take dance class because I was so tall they you know conversely I was they were going to give me the shots to stop me from growing and there you were going to take uh, classes on how to grow I don't know what that was um, but I'm I'm so funny and then I'm like oh my god so the ballet and all the you know I was I'm very and I'm so fucking tall I have to I have to you know, use my body and everything I do. It's just such I a like big part of it. I like the spider monkey you. <laughs> <laughs> and you um, have. <laughs> from the back and from the front. <laughs> <And you have. laughs> well. Um, as the room and Alice and Janney learned tonight, both of you auditioned for this show. Um, so uh, I would love to just talk a little bit about, uh, okay. Hello there. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Wait, wait. <laughs> do you guys enjoy auditioning? Do you find it to be helpful? Or I love it. I do too. <laughs> You'd be the first love. people I think to ever sit on this stage and say that, just I for the just, record. I love feeling like competitive and judged yeah, yeah. on my <laughs> looks. Yeah. Just going in and just flop sweating and just I love put yourself out there to be old. rejected. It's really lovely. <laughs> I have a friend who used to say, and I, I wanted to punch him in the face, but he's right. If you can get a, you know, he's like, you get to act today. When I'd say I was nervous about an audition, he said, hey, you get to act today. Go do that and enjoy it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Go, and I, oh, it's terrible. But, you know, I sometimes, I'd rather, I'd, having said that, I know you're about to say something, I would rather audition for something and get it than get it not having audition and go in and be, under the, you know, having people judge you even more on the first day of work and being afraid that, oh my God, what if I'm not, what if I really suck at this? I'd rather have someone okay me before I came aboard than be, right. you know. So you know, like your vision is their vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and yeah. yeah. I totally, yeah, yeah, yeah totally yep. agree. Yep. So what, I mean, what, I mean, there's no secret, but I mean, for you, what has been the secret to, you know, auditioning and being successful at it despite hating it? Has it just been going in with that mentality of today is the day I get to act? I, 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 oh, that's a really good question because it does, it does feel like a different skill set, auditioning versus, but, but I, I think that it, it, um, you have to really go in playing, it's a, you're playing a character on top of a character. You're playing, uh, to me at least, my strategy was like, I'm playing a person who's more confident than I am, and then also playing the character who's, um, you know, the, the, the lines. Like, and um, I remember one of my, like, one of my, I think my second or third audition here in LA, um, the casting director, I, I knew that I was doing an okay job. I was getting closer and closer. I had a couple of callbacks and did, my thing in front of the network people and the casting director followed me out of the audition room and said okay listen they like you but you're way too nervous they want you to come back in but don't be so nervous <laughs> I was like all right all right okay all right you got it and I so you know I just tried as hard as I could to not shake and um and you know, but it's it is that it's it is that weird thing of like you have to convince these people to instill like they need to feel that that you're going to and you they need to feel instilled with confidence. I like to. This is a little trick I used to do. I, I just remembered hearing you what? say that. that I, in? I, oh my <laughs> god! Um, I would say to myself if I was auditioning for Bonnie, I'd go, um, in my mind, I'd be like, okay, Bonnie couldn't be here today, so um, I'm gonna do you a favor and fill in for her right now. So I, it would put me in a position of 
doing them a favor and they should be grateful for me coming, you know, it was kind of a fun little thing I'd twist around and go like, well, actually Bonnie couldn't be here today, so Alison Janney was kind and was kind enough to come in and, and play her for this, this moment in time. So I was <laughs> like about myself, I, I, I tell myself all these little things to calm myself down, make me feel confident. Wish I'd known you then, I would have told you to do that. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I got the role. You did. Y'all see? You didn't need me. You didn't need me. On a, you I didn't get picked up. <laughs> but, you know, I'm getting to bore all of you sweet, gen <laughs> gentle, gentle people. Uh, you executive produced two films you starred in, What's, your, What's My Number and House Bunny. Um, did it change your perception of the audition process and sort of the filmmaking process in really seeing it from the other side for the first time? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I have so much to learn, and I learned a lot on with both projects. And that title has so many different meanings of of producing. And um, I would have, I, I learned, especially you know, with with House Bunny, uh, there were some a lot uh, with both movies. There were a lot of battles that I didn't know if I should fight. In hindsight, there are a few that I wish I would have, um, but I, you know, I, I it was, I, I was in this position too of being so grateful, and I still am that that both those movies got made, and um, and and just, but uh, yes, like I, I think that the process having like being on the other side I have so I have so much empathy I already had a lot of empathy towards actors in general because I, I am one but also um, auditioning with them and going through the casting process with a lot of actors um, it was uh, you know it's it's just it's just heart-wrenching in, in some ways because you just see people wanting to of course to to have their dreams come true and, and be a part of your project and you know and that's hugely flattering and um, so I it's still a learning process especially as a woman too um, and I, I could bore y you guys all to death with a lot of my other thoughts about being a woman in Hollywood but no. she has a podcast there's a hula hoop doing. there why don't I hula hoop yeah why don't you <laughs> what is that <laughs> doing <laughs> here <laughs> do you hula hoop I can do it Give me that thing. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love you. We're <laughs> just. Having a time. That lover. Um, well, I think we can all go home now. Yes. I'm going to use that as a moment to segue into some audience questions. Okay, good. Um, our first question is from Jack, and it's for both of you. And he wonders, is there anything you know now that you wish you knew at the beginning of your career? Oh, God. That's uh, so tough. Because on one, on one hand, my being so naive at the beginning of my career helped me a lot. Um, and now feeling a little more cynical, uh, I, it doesn't feel quite so helpful. Um, oh, God. I don't know. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it horrible to say keep expectations low? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Anna. That's pretty great. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Alice? Oh lord. Uh, you know what? A hundred years, all new people. <laughs> that's what I would have said to myself. I would have been like, stop worrying so much about everything and about, you know, trying to be what other people want. Just, it, it, there's something about saying that. That's another thing I say before I go. Like, hundred, hundred years, all new people. Just get over yourself. Get in and do what you need to do. Get it done. Be brave and go out, you know, because I was such a bait. I was such a chicken 
shit, when I, I would, it wouldn't return phone calls from people, but you know, casting people who would call me back in New York when I was, and I, I would be too afraid to call. Like I was, I was a wimp. I was gonna say the other, I don't know. But anyway. You were a yeah. cunt? No, oh, oh my God! <laughs> Yay, movie one, two, three, and four. <laughs> I've, offend, I've offended everybody. She's got it. Okay. Sorry, I, I know, I'm I know. Even. I'm getting naughty. I'm getting naughty. Sorry, guys. Um, Don't say that word. That's what I've learned. <laughs> uh, Anna, question? There be some people that are really mad at me. My agent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. No, that's okay. Uh, the next question from you is from Angel, and uh, the question is, what experiences do you think best helped you break into having such comedic success? Oh, boy. Don't say that word again is the I know, answer. I know. Don't say that word again. Uh, okay. Uh, experiences that comedic success. Well, I, you know, I, I, uh, my first audition in L.A. was for Scary Movie, and I got incredibly lucky. And I think that it was really... That was your first audition? That's pretty, those are pretty good odds. I mean, that's pretty... Al Allison, yes, but do you understand that in that movie, I got shot to the ceiling with sperm? <laughs> okay? Listen, I know I was lucky. It was a great break. <laughs> but bats came out of my vagina. No, it's <laughs> I'm upset. Right, yeah. Copy that, copy. <laughs> Oh God! I think I, r I really think the idea of Keenan Ivory Wayans uh, it, during Scary Movie um, said to me, you know, he said he said that he he said there's no vanity in comedy, and I really have tried to sort of think about that idea when um, and in in a part of a larger picture because you know my character in House Bunny. I was in little bikinis or whatever, and big crazy hair, and um, but the idea of like being uh, being perceived as a foolish idiot by uh, by the larger public, you know, and the idea that it's like all right, I'm just gonna have to accept the idea that that there might be people out there that that think that I am that character. And getting getting over that vanity because the idea of of sort of winking at the audience going halfway in um, is not a successful choice. Thanks, guys. Well, <laughs> that was all written out for me and coded <laughs> behind my ears. <laughs> uh. <laughs> This is a question for both of you from Deidre. Uh, she wants to know if working on mom has changed your understanding of recovery, and if so, how do you feel you've been changed and educated because of the show's sort of subject matter? Um, I think for, for, for me, I learned how much, um, I, I'm no stranger to, well, hmm, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, I, I have learned how much um, humor uh, there is in the in the recovery rooms, and that is uh, because I think I when I had my first share as Bonnie, um, I had a monologue and I was doing it very sincerely, very earnestly. And Chuck said, "No, you're 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 laughing at yourself here. You're having fun. You're you're sharing your you know when you used to drink ten. Whenever Bonnie was talking about everything she used to do and 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 how much she used to drink, what you know. But it was kind of like her stand up routine." And, it, and um, there was a lot of humor and laughter in the, in the recovery rooms, and there's uh, also um, a lot of uh, hope, and uh, recovery is not, a, um, not a, a, a death sentence, you know, it's a, it's a life sentence with w wonderful possibilities, and that, I think that's what I'm, I'm really proud that our show um, shows that, that part of it, and um, I think it's really important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I've, you know, on a personal level, I've never been a part of anything that, you know, people come up to me um, at the supermarket, the gas station. I don't actually go to those places. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, but but truly, like pe people have never approached me, and with so much emotion about the show and what it sort of gives to them, and and that means a whole lot. To, that you know, we we've, we've been able to touch people and move people and and speak to uh, a you know a huge epidemic in our country, and and um, I'm, I'm I feel incredibly proud. Allison, we have a question from Kat who wants to know, in such a successful career like yours, how important has sort of your mindset been throughout the process and whatever mindset sort of that is about how you approach your career? How important has my mindset been to my career? <coughs> well, I think, uh, I don't know how to answer questions like that. I feel like uh, if my mindset had been better in the beginning, I maybe would have had a, I don't know, I, oh God. <laughs> um, I don't know how to answer this question. Well, can I? <laughs> <laughs> can I do Please. it for you? Please. From now on, well, all questions. I that I, I did. I don't know if this is exactly what Cat was it, mm -hmm. what Cat was um, was meaning, but I do think that um, there's. I think that when I moved here and I had some early mild success, I. There was, uh, in my naive brain, I thought that the, that I had crossed the finish line. That, like, the marathon was over. That, like, well, I got those roles in those successful movies, so therefore, I'm good to go for the rest of my life. And, uh, like, the realization of getting your 27th job is so much harder than getting you're, getting the first job is really hard, but getting that job is so much harder. And and just the idea of like thinking about growth and longevity and hoping to overcome how the industry views you. Do you think that's what Kat was well, getting I at? I like that. I also think that a lot of times people think, oh, well, you made me think about how you, you feel like you get one job and that's going to automatically be lead to the you're next job set. and then you're set and I think one thing I've learned in this business is everybody no matter who you are no matter you know if you're Tom Hanks or wh whoever you're, you you worry about the next job everyone and I think that the important thing uh, that I wish I'd had and I'm gonna gonna um, attempt to do is to, to maintain a um, mindset of that I'm good enough and I'm good you know who I have some sort of strength of self and and um, um, peace within myself uh, to to counter balance all the craziness that that we go through and I didn't really I wasn't armed with that so my mindset was kind of I got I was oh my god the, the highs and lows and the tears and the, the you know it would be it would have been nice to have uh, learned to meditate and take care of to myself you know so yeah, cat. My mindset was, I got through it. I got, got, you know, but could have been, could have been better. I have to ask, Allison. You know, you're talking a little bit about the roles and sort of the significance they can have. I mean. What was very interesting to me was just last week, you know, you went to the White House and you went to the White House briefing room, you know, a, ro a fake room that you lived in for seven years on the West Wing to the actual White House reporters. And I mean, everyone was so excited. What is it like to have, you know, played a character that is so beloved to people that even years later, the idea of you theoretically reprising that, you know, in a real life scenario actually gets people excited. Um, I think it's a testament to the, the to Aaron Sorkin and those incredible characters he wrote that were so, <laughs> just resonated on such a, okay. like, can you imagine this right is, now? We okay. need a, we I need know a West I've, Wing on I know TV I've right now. I've been obnoxious, like, my whole life, <laughs> but, and Aaron is so brilliant, but I've, uh, you, you are, oh, you, honey, you yeah. are, I, a genius. I love and you. I love there's you. There's a reason Thank you why for you have won so many Emmys. <laughs> I love people, you. You always, uh, like, I've heard you give a similar answer to this, and I, you know. Well, I'm just saying, it's not, I'm not a, you know, it takes a village. It takes a village to create this, something like yeah. that, and, and I am part, I am a village member. And so are you. I am part of the village. I'm a card-carrying village member, and I, um, you know, 
I put in my two cents in that, but my God, it was kind of, it was overwhelming to step into the, strangely comfortable to step into the real press briefing room, because West Wing made ours exactly the same. So I felt the only difference was looking out into the reporters, and some of them were not having it, you know? <laughs> and I <laughs> saw this one guy out there, and I just started to sweat, and I was like, oh my God. I don't know who he was, but he was not happy that I was out there, and um, it was uh, it was terrifying. Um, um, but so I'm so it's so much fun at this point in the game to go to Washington and still feel like a little bit of a rock star there. You know, <laughs> people are so we did so much to give uh, people in public service a great, you know, uh, name, give them, give, you know show off what they do in, in, in such a romantic way as Aaron did it. It's so nice and, and so what we need right now in this country is what's, you know, our, I mean, it's kind of crazy out there. It makes me... I wouldn't mm -hmm. think, I don't think so. No, <laughs> not crazy at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We've been talking our, about ourselves all day. You're getting, we're getting yeah, giddy. That's good. Giddy, giddy. Our yeah. final question uh, comes from Ken for both of you. Okay. And uh, he will, you know, you guys are in front of a room of actors. And so he wants to know, uh, what advice would you give an actor based off your experience or what you've learned in doing this? I feel like I answered that. Didn't I, did you guys, did anyone feel like I didn't? Sorry. I feel like I answered that. You go. <laughs> I think, I, I really think, um, Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, focusing on the the joy that you get with truly inhabiting a character as opposed to the fame or the success of of it. Because as you as you focus on that your art and that passion in and of itself, even if you're not making any money, um, that enables you to grow. Also, understanding that auditioning is is truly an art in and of itself and a craft, and it's a difficult thing to do. Selling yourself as a person um, that has enough confidence that these people are going to be able to be like, yeah, we're going to invest, you know, a few million into this person. Um, but but I I really think that. Um, I always get inspired when I hear stories about people, as especially as a woman, I'm 39, um, who are who find success later on in life, and and I I, I and, the, and it really the idea of sort of cream rising to the top a little bit of like um, I I, I just I don't know I just I just think like sort of working towards the passion of acting, as opposed to the fame or the money, those things, those things are wonderful sometimes. <laughs> well, the money part's good, but yeah, but <laughs> but uh, but I I think that 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 I get a, I, I get a lot of kids nowadays that will um, like or their parents that will ask me like, how do I become famous? And I feel like that priority is so. It's so skewed. It's like this is not. Uh, yes, there, of course, there's delicious things that come with that. There's also a lot of pain and weirdness, but <laughs> and we can go into that later in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, I, but the idea that it, that coming from a place of a, a truly a love of expression and in this format and uh, and having the other elements I think it's important to for them to be secondary well well said with that oh and a hug I love it Anna, Allison, thank you so much for being thank here today. You. Thank you all thank so you. much thank for coming out to the Saturday Watch Mom. Thank, thank you, you and have a great day. <laughs>